Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting non-standard equation. I was about to call it exponential, but we have 1 over x on the right hand side, so it's kind of like a mixture of different things. We have 4 to the power x equals 1 over x, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and for these kinds of equations, you cannot always use two methods. Well, most of the time you can. Obviously, there's a way to numerically solve these equations. Is there? Anyways, let's get started with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to write first this as a product. So I want to cross multiply. That's going to give me x times 4 to the power x equals 1. Great. And x doesn't zero, we know that, right? x doesn't equal zero, I meant. Uh, so multiplying both sides by x is fine. And for me, we want to put it in a nicer form. You know what that form is? It is t e to the t. And we're going to apply a special function to it, which I'll tell you in a little bit. You probably know what it is, though. If you've seen some of my previous videos, uh, you would recognize it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change 4 to Euler's number e. Because I'm going to work with exponentials here, so I can write 4 as e to the power ln 4, right? And let's go ahead and replace it with that, e to the power ln 4, and then I have to raise it to the power x, and this equals 1. Notice that I haven't changed anything, I just rewrote it. And now, we're going to multiply these exponents, right? These two. So that's going to give us x times e to the power x ln 4, I rather write the x first, equals 1. Here's where we do the magic touch, or should I say Lambert touch, right? Okay, great. So since we want to put it into the form t to the t, this is going to be our t, okay? Our t is, oops, x ln 4. So I do need to multiply both sides by ln 4, which you can do just by multiplying both sides by ln 4. 1 times ln 4 is ln 4. So notice that we just multiply by ln 4 here and here. And now this is going to be our t, right? And we have t to the t. This is the time to apply Lambert's w function. So let's go ahead and apply Lambert's w on both sides. w here that and w here. That's our magical function. When we apply it on the left-hand side, now what happens if you apply Lambert's w function to this? So suppose... This is going to be our Lambert machine, and this is the input. The output is just going to be t. It's kind of like a fun way to explain functions. It's kind of like a function bag, whatever, the machine. You input this, and you get an output. If you put diff two different inputs, you could still get the same output, which usually happens with functions like this, and which, does, which means that the function is not one-to-one, -one, right? Or it doesn't mean it means that it's not injective. Okay, anyways, that's a different story, but we could also write it as follows. If you apply Lambert's W on T to the T, you get T. It's that simple. That's the definition. And you can also think of this as the inverse function for T E to the T, because if you invert it, you're gonna get that. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, uh, by this definition, we when we apply Lambert's W on the left hand side, we should be getting the t, which is x ln 4. And on the right hand side, we're getting w of ln 4. But what is w of ln 4? Can we put this in the into the same form like t e to the t or c e to the c? Since ln 4 is a constant, i rather use something like c. I mean, c and t are both variables, but notice that a lot of times x, y, z, w, t are used for variables. and C for constants, or K maybe sometimes. Depends. You can do whatever you want. But a W of ln 4, I want to put that into C to the C form. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to write this as ln 2 squared. And by using properties of logarithms, I'm going to write this as W of 2 ln 2. This is where the math and magic begins. I'm going to write this as ln 2 times E to the power ln 2. In other words, convert this two into that. And remember, we did that on the left-hand side already. And now, this is going to be your C. You see what I see? Okay, hopefully you do see. And what you should see is C to the C. 
And if you apply W on it, you're going to get C, which is ln2. Make sense? So in other words, W of ln4 is ln2, which is kind of interesting, right? And that's what we have on the right hand side. So now we have x ln4 equals ln2, which is actually awesome because now we can take it. Let's erase this part, which we already know, right? Okay, let's clean this up. And now we're going to continue with this, which is a lot nicer, right? So now x ln4 is ln2. So let's rewrite it. It's cleaner. Now we're going to divide both sides by ln4. That's going to give us ln2 divided by ln4. ln cancels out and you end up with one half, right? Is that correct? <laughs> no, it's not correct. You should do the following. ln2 over ln2 squared, which is 2 ln2. ln2 cancels out and you end up with one half again. Oh, is that always going to work? No, it's just uh, kind of like one of those special cases, which is kind of funny because we did something wrong while well, we got the right answer. Obviously, you can start with zero and zero implies one is a true statement. So you can get start with something wrong and you can get something right at the end. Anyways, x equals one half is the solution. But here's the million dollar question. Is that the only solution? And we're going to verify that a little bit towards the end because I still have to show you the second method, right? Anyways, so that's the answer we got so far. So here's what happens with Lambert's W function, because uh, it's not one to one. You have to split it up into two pieces for real numbers. And those are called the branches of this function. So depending on the interval you're on, uh, you're going to get different solutions. But in this case, uh, are we hitting two branches? That's a good question, and you can kind of look up. And by the way, I don't think there's an easy way to graph Lambert's W function with Desmos, but if you do this, x equals y e to the y, and x equals y e to the y, on different intervals, of course, you kind of have to specify the, the values of y or x, whatever, and you can kind of find out. Uh, but that's going to give you the graph. Anyways, I think I shared you with you the graph of Lambert's W function before. If I can find the link and I'll try to link it. If you know it, please link it down below. Anyways, so x equals one half. Now we're going to look at the second method. And guess what? Second method is just awesome. Okay, we have four to the power x equals one over x. Are you ready for the roller coaster ride? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the power one over x. And that's going to give us, these are going to cancel out, 1 over x to the power 1 over x equals 4, which can be written as 2 squared. Uh-oh, this is not fair. 1 over x equals 2, which implies x equals 1 half, right? But wait a minute, you just find it so quickly, it's not fair. Well, it's the second method, that's what happens with it. But the idea is, this is a contrived problem. A lot of people are, and some people are going to complain, oh, this is a contrived problem. That's what competition problems are, so just relax. Okay, so x equals one half, and let's go ahead and take a look at some results like a graph. How about that? Yes, as you can see, there's only one intersection point on the graph, and if you look it up on Desmos, I mean Wolfram Alpha, WA, right? You're gonna get this solution, and then of course, like I said earlier, so you're gonna get this solution on Wolfram Alpha, but um, if you uh, take a look at these, these are basically different branches of Lambert W function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.